Invincible is a show that probably should not work as well as it does. A gory superhero show featuring an evil Superman as the main antagonist is territory we have definitely been through before. Plus, by the time season 1 rolled around, Endgame had already been out for two whole years, meaning that superheroes were not exactly a fresh concept. But it still managed to capture audiences' attention because of its strong characters and well laid out story. I mean, just type Omni-Man into YouTube and you'll come up with a billion different video essays talking about the genius of his reveal in the first episode or the train scene, or any of the million different moments the show doles out. It's the reason why I love Invincible so much. It manages to feel fresh, not through brand new ideas or shock value, but through the strength of its narrative. And this is very apparent in how Season 2 deals with the multiverse. Going into Season 2, Invincible had a pretty big task on its shoulders, because not only has it been two years since Season 1 dropped, during which times audiences only really become less enamored with the superhero genre. But it also has to convince people to watch yet another multiverse story. And while I love multiverse stories, we have had a lot of them recently. Both Marvel, DC, and Sony have pretty much put all of their eggs into that basket, to some very good, very middling, and very bad results. And to top it all off, Mark's major conflict this season, that he doesn't want to turn into Omni-Man, is also something we have definitely seen before. Sons not wanting to turn into their evil dads basically goes back to ancient Greece. But despite all of this, I am absolutely hooked on Invincible Season 2. Because like it has done before time and time again, Invincible breathes new life into its subject matter through impeccable writing that pushes its characters forward in new and interesting ways. Usually, the multiverse is seen as something that's full of hope. In Into the Spider-Verse, it lets Miles know he's not alone, in No Way Home, it sort of does the same thing. And in Everything Everywhere All at Once, it teaches Evelyn about what matters most in life. But in Invincible, the multiverse serves as almost an antagonistic negative force by having Mark turn evil and team up with his dad in most other realities. And this pushes Mark's character development in a really interesting way by actually lending credibility to his fears of turning into Omni-Man. Normally, when a character has this fear, it's kind of empty because it doesn't usually feel like an actual possibility. Another character just needs to tell them they're clearly nothing like their dad and we're good. But here, we know it's actually sort of a highly likely outcome, and this knowledge will undoubtedly only push Mark deeper into his despair and self-doubt. Invincible isn't fantastic because it brings groundbreaking ideas to the table, but because it uses those ideas in a way that's perfectly suited to develop their specific characters. It's ultimately the power of good writing, which is way more impressive, and will serve the show better in the long run after the hype of superheroes has fully died down. Okay, like that's ever gonna happen.